I guess when I start thinking of myself mostly, the word uh, that comes to mind is what a coward that I found myself to be. When I look at the situation and what I allowed myself and where I allowed myself to go, The thing I try to remember sometimes is that what I am today is not what I was at 19. It all seems so very simple in the beginning. And I can only tell you, I have been with something that started only as one woman with one man that turned into one of the most disastrous, most horrendous, most abominable situations that, that could possibly come out of it. The story of Charles Manson and his family is one of the most bizarre tales in Los Angeles history, a horrible sequence of events that stunned the city and shocked the world. It was Friday, August 9, 1969. After Sharon Tate, her unborn child, and four friends were brutally murdered at the Tate home in Benedict Canyon. The following night, there was another bloody stabbing and two more victims, Lino and Rosemary LaBianca. For several months, police were puzzled and confused, but later that year, Charles Manson was arrested, along with a family of drug-crazed followers. Manson seemed to have an indescribable power over his families. Members saw him as the modern-day messiah. Susan Atkins, Patricia Krenwinkel, and Leslie Van Houten were three of Charlie's girls, three who killed for him. They seemed to do so only out of mindless devotion to their leader. By the time I was in trial, by the time I was facing all the charges, I just accepted everything that I had been told and I gave up every little bit of me to that man who demanded every little bit of me. But I didn't realize that I gave up the person I could have been. And it was easy to accept because to not accept this meant I had to start the discovery of how I got here. my background started is I was in a house where silence was golden by my parents. I had a sister who was seven years older than I was and she was deemed incorrigible probably by the time she was like four or five because she was a half sister and she ended up getting into drugs and she had a child by 15. As I started to go to school, I never felt like I fitted in. I never had that sense of belonging. So I was watching the family fall apart and becoming closer to a sister that was on a road for her own destruction. And at that time, I was 18 years old, 19. I had started losing contact with friends and things, and I decided to drop out of college, and I went to live with my sister. And I was starting to drink it. I was using marijuana and hash and whatever my sister had around. I was looking for a way out. And I found myself thinking there has to be more because I never had ever developed the sense of knowing who I was and where I was going and what I wanted to do. Because I wanted to please. I wanted to be loved. I wanted for the first time to feel safe. I wanted to feel like someone was going to care for me because I hadn't felt that from anywhere else in my life. And in giving up and moving on with Manson was basically just throwing away the rest of my life.
At 23, I ended up on death row. I was in a cell 23 hours a day. And it was, I think, at that point more than ever that all of a sudden, having been on death row and away from any influence of him, that I was going to have to make the decision of my life. And I would have to say that everything I had ever believed was now wrong. To do that was going to be the most difficult thing I'd ever done because I would now have to be fully responsible for the damage, the wreckage, and the horror. It is countless how many lives were shattered by the path of destruction that I was a part of. And it all comes from just such a simple thing as just wanting to be loved. The saddest part is my definition of love was totally skewed. When you live in a situation like that, there is nothing that's ever going to come from it that is good. And it can only end up wrong. And that is how I've looked at my life. It is broken beyond repair. But there's something that comes with that little bit that says every day, OK, I did that. But why did I do that? And it's pulling apart this enmeshed garbage, pulling apart who am I, who is he, where am I in this, and then recreating the person. And there is a freedom in that, to finally recreate that today I am who I choose to be. I take responsibility every day for every word I say, what I believe, what I do. I am who I am today because I have fought desperately for everything that I am, for those beliefs, for it doesn't matter whether my politics, whatever it may be, they're mine now. They're mine because I have weighed them, I have looked at them, and I have taken, I have listened, but no one tells me that this is what I must take or accept. These are my choices. I've learned choice. I learned choice at the most horrific cost.